the University of Albany football may be one of the best stories this year in college football. They have had one of the greatest single season turnarounds this year and are coming off a huge road win over Idaho in the Kibbe Dome this past weekend, but will have their toughest test of the season in Brookings, South Dakota on Friday when they take on defending FCS national champions, South Dakota State. But how do we get here? This is the story of the greatest turnaround in college football this season. This is the story of Albany football. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'm planning to release a video every day from now until Christmas. Also, let me know who you think will win the FCS national title this season in the comment section below. Greg Gattuso took over as Albany's head football coach in 2014 after serving as the assistant head coach and defensive line coach at Maryland. Gattuso took over for legendary head coach Bob Ford, who helped guide the Great Danes from the club level in the early 1970s to eventually the FCS level where they now play after they spent time at the Division III and Division II levels. He led the Great Danes to eight conference titles, two Gridiron Classics, the Division I AA playoffs, and 256 wins. After a 1-11 season in 2013, Ford decided to retire after 44 seasons. He went from the youngest head coach at the college level in 1965 at St. Lawrence University to being the oldest coach in college football at the time of his retirement. Gattuso had big shoes but was viewed as a guy who could continue Albany's upward trajectory and someone who may lead the Great Danes to the national title down the road. He was viewed as a strong recruiter and quickly led them to a 7-5 record his first year, but the Great Danes would continue to find on and off success until 2019. Entering the 2019 season, he was sitting at a record of 24-32, and but Albany's administration believed in the image he was selling and continued to stick with the plan. 2019 would be the best season under Gattuso at the time, who led the Great Danes to a 9-5 record in the second round of the FCS playoffs. He was named the Coach of the Year, and everything seemed to be looking up. That was until COVID sent the program on a bad trajectory. Gattuso spoke on the situation saying, We never got the benefit of that playoff run. We never got to recruit after it. We didn't even get to go on the road recruiting for like a year and a half. Then we lost some players and we lost some different things. I think we can build off this momentum. Win or lose Saturday, we had a great year. We're excited about where we're at. We're getting a lot of interest at us and it's about recruiting. We have a good football team. They finished a shortened 2020 season with a 1-3 record and the 2021 season with a 2-9 record. During that period, they saw guys like Jared Verse transfer to Florida State and Gattuso needed to make a change to members of his coaching staff. Gattuso hired offense coordinator Jared Ambrose last year and promoted Bill Nessel to defensive coordinator this season. Ambrose brought in quarterback Reese Poffenbarger, from Old Dominion, who led the FCS in passing touchdowns this year with 31 and is only a sophomore. Heading into the 2023 season, Albany was projected to finish 11th in the CAA, but the team would have a different story to tell than what the media was portraying. They wanted to win a conference title and wanted to make a run in the FCS playoffs. Poffenbarger and co. believed in what Coach Gattuso's staff's vision telling the media Gattuso just puts the complete trust in his players and lets us be our own personalities on and off the field, which is an extension of him and his coaching. When you allow your players kind of their own spin on a game plan and their own spin on the way they want to play, you're not too overbearing as a coach. It's led to success. Albany opened the season with a 34-13 win over Fordham before dropping two straight to FBS opponents. They traveled to Marshall and almost pulled off the upset, but fell short in the end. At one point, they were even up 17-7 before a late surge by Marshall led to them losing 21-17. The following week, they traveled to Hawaii, going into half with the Warriors tied 17-17, but in the end, once again, they came up short, only mustering a field goal in the second half and allowing 14 points to the Warriors. They rebounded with an important win on the road against Morgan State two weeks later to end their two-game skid, and moved to 2-2 two two on the season. Next came their hometown heroes game against number 16 Villanova. 
Nova came into the game as favorites, which only motivated the Great Danes even more, as they dominated Villanova 31-10 to secure their first conference win of the season. They followed that up with a win over Towson 24-17. The Great Danes found themselves ranked as the 24th best team at the FCS level, heading into their matchup against New Hampshire. Poffenbarger threw for 373 yards and 4 touchdowns, but also threw 2 interceptions. They had the offense firing in a shootout, but in the end came up short against New Hampshire on the road, 38-31. Albany hosted Rhode Island the following week during their homecoming game and dismantled them 35-10. They continued to stack wins the remainder of the season, beating Maine 37-21 on the road, number 24 William & Mary 24-8 at home, Stony Brook 38-20 on the road and finished their regular season off strong with a dominant win over Monmouth 41-0 on Senior Day. Poffenbarger finished the game throwing for 247 passing yards and 4 passing touchdowns, while Brian Abraham finished the game with 3 sacks. With the win, Albany won a share of the CAA Conference title for the first time in school history, and it meant they would be returning to the FCS playoffs. U Albany officially wrote, Officially CAA co-champions, U Albany shares the regular season crown with number 10 Villanova and Richmond. The league's automatic bid goes to Villanova, winning the three-way tiebreaker due to point differential. The Great Danes will move on to the FCS playoffs. What is wild to me is the fact that Albany beat Villanova head-to-head, -head, but due to them not playing Richmond, they did not get to claim the title outright, nor did they get the automatic bid. Albany was given the 5 seed for the FCS playoffs and was put on the South Dakota side of the bracket. They would take on Richmond in the second round of the playoffs, with the Spiders coming off a win over North Carolina Central in the first round by a score of 49-27, but the Great Danes were 7-point favorites heading into the matchup with a 64% chance of winning the game. Albany would dominate throughout the day going into the fourth quarter up 41-7, and went on to win 41-13 behind Poffenbarger's four total touchdowns. With the win, the 2023 squad became the first team in program history to make it to the quarterfinals of the FCS playoffs, and they traveled to Idaho to take on the Vandals and the Pekibi Dome. It was the first matchup ever between the two schools, and there was a lot of history on the line heading into the game. According to Sports Illustrated's Zach McKinnell, the Great Danes were looking to make the first appearance in the semifinals in school history, while the Vandals looked to win their first quarterfinal game since 1993. Albany entered the game with the best defense based on yards allowed per play and had a dominant defensive line headlined by Anton Junkaj and AJ Simon. They also had the nation's best rush defense at the FCS level, allowing only 76.1 yards per game. Idaho had escaped the previous week against Southern Illinois with their 20-17 win and struggled against the pass rush all season long. The Vandals entered the game as slight favorites, but the Great Danes were not going down without a fight. During this game, which for some reason was not on national TV but was on ESPN Plus instead, we saw a new star make a name for himself. Former Division II wide receiver Brevin Easton had himself a night finishing the game with 228 yards and three touchdowns including the game-winning touchdown. Albany pulled off the upset with a defensive masterpiece, 30-22 to move to the semifinals of the FCS playoffs. After the game, Easton told the media, it definitely means everything to get to this point. Coming from a Division II team and just a lot of different ups and downs going th on throughout my life and just finding a way to persevere, but I'm definitely most happy for me and my whole family, my football family, and everybody on the team. We've been through a lot these last two years, and to get to this point is just bittersweet. They will have their biggest test of the season this week when they travel to Brookings, South Dakota to take on defending FCS champions and number one seed South Dakota State. Gattuso told the media, I just have faith in these guys. They played their tails off. We just kept banging away and banging away until we could get an opportunity to get the lead and we were able to hold on to it. So it's just a magical win for our program. First time in the final four is pretty sweet. The Idaho win was the program's first win outside the Eastern time zone as well. Albany is on a magical run, but will have a huge battle against the Jackrabbits on Friday. Will they be able to pull off the upset? I don't know, but they have been a really fun team to watch this year. What do you think? Who wins the FCS national title this year? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more college football content. 
Thank you so much for watching, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.